when he came out. <laughs> now, Moshe Rabbeinu, and he, he's going to be, he's going to elevate all the <coughs> soul sparks that are still trapped in the depths and therefore unable to extricate themselves from there. And he will come with many other souls, tens of thousands of them. They will all descend with Moshe from the supernal garden of Eden. For each soul, according to its level, descends to elevate the souls that, is asso- that it is associated with, i.e. with whom it is connected, of whom it is a like, like a parent. The parent souls, the, the, the root souls, never, never forget us little extensions down here. We think that this is like reality. That's reality. And we are beams of the higher souls coming down, projected into this lower reality to live out a drama, a 6,000 year drama. And towards the end of the drama, the higher souls of which we are the children <coughs> are going to start to enter into the drama in a revealed way. That is what all of the Jewish history is waiting for. For each soul, according to its level, descends to elevate the soul that is associated with, for they are incapable of elevating themselves. The way we're made is it just seems that we're just not... It, it seems unfair. Why did you make us in such a way that we can't do the work? You've given us the mitzvah, you've given us the Torah, and you've given us the davening, and you've given us everything we need, and we want to make a difference. And, and yet the way history w- runs is that on the, in, on the internal level, all the difference is made. The internal level, everything is coming closer and closer to final tikkun. But on the external level of history, it goes downhill. It seems that we're farther away from than ever. <coughs> you come into the world and you look at the world and you say, like, what did they do? They left 99% of the work, 99.9% of the, <coughs> the world is impossible. How can we ever lift the world up? What did they do in all those generations? So the answer is, you're looking at it from the outside. It's really 99% 99.9% done on the inside. It's just the, the, the little 0.1% that hasn't been done that you see as 99. It's a paradigm shift. On the inside level, they've done everything. When they did Kiddush Levana back in the times of the Temple, thus says the Yida, the Yida Kodesh, the Yehudi Kadosh. when they did Kiddush Levana in the Temple times, you think they didn't fix the moon. They fixed it. But only so much can be revealed. And as we go down into history, and go further and further, it seems like less and less is fixed. It's crazy. But again, the secret is, on the inside, everything is ready. On the outside, it seems not. And this is an incredible moment when that is about to change. Next page. Last page. It's all out of order, but when you see it once through, and then you'll see the movie again, you understand. <laughs> and again, then we can even read it with the Aramaic, and I can explain to you what's in the, what's in the small letters, and it's even better. But the first time, it's re- it would be ridiculous to do that to anybody. <laughs> so we're just reading the English, which was my attempt to 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 bring it down <coughs> in a digestible form. Is this for sale? <laughs> we keep this or we keep it. <laughs> he will lift his eyes and see a young man. Moshe, I guess, is the subject of the sentence. Will lift his eyes and see a young man. He is called the lower tzaddik, the Mashiach and Yosef. I have to explain to you where Mashiach and Yosef comes in. What is this thing called Mashiach and Yosef? It means there's two messiahs. One is from the house of Yosef and one is from the house of David. And they're very important. And people know a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, but it's it's really um, it's really <coughs> something to talk about. For the moment, we go on. So Moshe will see there's a guy there called the Lower Tzaddik. He sits upon a tower. The tower was explained before as that it has to do with prayer. Prayer is called is Shem Hashem Migdal. What was the verse that was used in the Hebrew? Migdal Oz Shem Hashem. Bo Yarut Tzadik Vinizgav. So it was there over there that the, the, the Zohar spoke about a tower that is something to do with the Shekhinah in prayer. The Tzadik sits on the tower. And it's not literal. It means that he's, he's definitely involved in prayer. That's all I want from it from right now. He'll lift his eyes and see a young man. He's called the Lord Tzadik. He sits upon a tower with a bone and arrow. He shoots his arrows at the Nachash. 
Remember the beginning Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, all you higher souls, it is now time to, to put on your battle gear, to get ready to the, for the battle with the Nachash. Your battle gear. So here it mentions the battle gear, bow and arrow. The shooting of the arrows at the Nachash is the shooting of words, of the words of prayer, at the force that, that keeps people from knowing that Hashem is the reality, the paro force, the, the, the paro, gravitational force, <coughs> a physical reality that prevents us from really knowing that we can fly, that we can truly be connected to God. So that we're shooting arrows are the arrows of the mouth, of the heart, and of the mind together. That's the image. These are the prayers of Israel, but the Nachash doesn't seem to be affected by them, affected as two Fs, in the least. That's what I meant before, is just taking each one out and doesn't, it's like totally not affected. It's just a very strange thing. We're shooting arrows. Why isn't he affected? Next paragraph. The tzaddik continues to shoot his arrows from his lips. He shoots at the Nachash, but they do not seem to affect it. It's only just repeating because the, the text repeats it. This is not due to, to any deficiency of the supernal tzaddik, but rather to the weakness of the lower tzaddik down below. Whatever that means, it means that up above everything is fine, but down below we're really lacking. He is not complete. It is for this reason that the Nachash seems completely unaffected. Last paragraph. The situation will remain like this until the faithful shepherd comes to the rescue. With one single arrow, he will slay the Nachash and extricate, <coughs> extricate and elevate all the souls from the matrix of the Klipot. Kind of a... All right. Because the point here again was simplicity and to just describe the scene. <coughs> that right now our prayers seem to be ineffective. Our mitzvot, our Torah, it must seem like that. We must know that our prayers and our Torah, the inner level that we begin with, the imuna, the faith that we have, the yearning we have for God, is the real thing. Paro, which is the newspapers, and the buildings, and the governments, and the empire of Rome, and the Ishmaelim, and all of the religions of the world, compared to the prophetic knowledge that we've been given, is all an illusion. It's an attempt, and they have, they have sparks, they have sparks of truth, but they do not have it. And now even we don't have the truth, because we've been disconnected. So we have to pray, please Hashem, give us your Torah. Give us the inner Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu was, was embodying, and the Torah that he brought down, that we're promised that was Mashiach will come, that the fullness of the Torah will be revealed to us. We have to beg Hashem for that Torah, the, the transformational Torah for all existence. In the meantime, it has to feel <coughs> not working. It just struck me when I was really, you know, I've learned this many times. It has, it, it, that's part of this dramatic thing that God is into. He's a dramatist. Mm -hmm. he, he, but we have to start to see. That's why these texts are given to us. These metaphors are given to us. And they're, they're wrapped in, in many wrappings. But when you unwrap them, unwrap them, they are telling us we can make a difference. And it's in the inner world. And if we truly connect to the inner, then we can even start to make a difference outside. But it has to be first and foremost an in inner experience. So we didn't do justice to it, and there's no time to do anything more than that now. I want to do a meditation with you, and I want to do, uh, bring it to a closure. Then there's a lot to be said, like for sure. And, and, and basically, if I would just try and summarize again, I'd probably just say the same thing again and again. Because really, at this point in our meeting with each other, it's a, it's the yearning that's more important than anything else. There's this movie going on. And this, this, the arrows are being shot, and the dragon is, is, being, is not being affected. In the Hebrew, he explains that, this, that the system of evil does not feel any loss at any of the souls that are doing tshuva at first. It says, ah, oh, it's okay. It, it's not going to really affect anything. They're not going to have any effect. But the tshuva of Amisro, the flood of, 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 of the deep yearning for godliness that's it's coming into our people now. We have to know that it really is 
I'm here because I did